Hi there and welcome to this lesson where we are looking at the sign rule. However, before we get to the sign rule, let's first get to the sign ratio. Okay, so sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, that's important to know. Now, one thing that you must remember is that I can only use the sign ratio when I'm working in a 90 degree triangle, in a right triangle. Okay, so one of the conditions to use the sign theta equal to opposite over hypotenuse is that we need an angle equal to 90 degrees and then we have one angle equal to 90 degrees okay now in this triangle we're going to call this a b and c as we discussed before with naming a triangle and this will be a lowercase c the opposite side lengths get the lowercase of the vertice letter and uh, so that if we are talking about something like sine of angle B is equal to opposite which would then be the B divided by uh, the hypotenuse which is C okay and now you'll notice that C is also opposite the angle that I already have okay so to use the sine ratio I need Oh, I use two angles that's actually what I'm saying I use two angles and two sides and the two sides that I'm using is the side opposite the one angle and the side opposite the other angle that I'm using so there's two angles that I'm using and the two sides that are opposite it but in this case the one of the angles that I'm using is very specific it must be a 90 degree at uh, angle now what if I don't have that okay so let's draw draw a triangle where I don't necessarily have a 90 that looks close to 90 let's do that that's clearly not a 90 degree triangle we'll call that angle a B and C and in the previous video we saw that we can make a 90 degree triangle out of this or actually make two 90 degree triangles out of this by dropping a 90 degree line a, a perpendicular line down there so it's um it's almost like I'm standing there and dropping a rock and I call that D okay now this is still this whole distance B to C is called side length A this whole distance here A to C is called side length B that one is called side length C and what I'm going to call this line here I'm going to call it H because it represents the height of that triangle from its base you'll see it's lying on one of its sides and I'm dropping down a perpendicular height now what I can do now is since I do have a 90 degree triangle I now have two triangles here let's first work in this triangle in this triangle okay so what I would like to do is I would like to write this side side length B in terms of side length C angle B and angle C why why would I like to do that well look here I've got an angle and its opposite side and I've got an angle and its opposite side so for now we're just ignoring angle A and and its uh, role in this matter let's just see if we can get some relationship between the two side lengths and their uh, opposite angles or the two angles any two angle and its opposite side length now to do that what I'm going to do is first write H the height in terms of B and C and how why can I do that well look here here's B that's the height in this case and there's C that's more or less the same as what I have here there's C and there's angle B okay here's angle B the only difference now is instead of calling this B it's now called H because B is now that line okay now how can we write B as some sort of relationship between this angle and that side length well it's actually easy I just multiply both sides with a C then I see okay I get B is equal to C sine B and that's it ok 
okay? B is equal to C sine of B. So if I know what the hypotenuse is, and I know what the angle is, then I can work out how high this triangle goes by multiplying the hypotenuse with sine of the angle. Okay, that's, that's the idea. Now, the same goes for here. Okay, I can therefore write that sine of B, since I'm working in a 90 degree triangle, I'm allowed to use sine of B, and sine of B will be opposite, which in this case is H, over hypotenuse, which in this case is C. So H is equal to C sine of angle B. I just multiply both sides with a C. Now that was working in this triangle. Now let's work in the other triangle and see if we can also write H in a different way in this triangle. Okay, so now the triangle is a little bit turned around. This is now my observed angle theta. That is my opposite side length. H is still opposite. And my hypotenuse is now B because remember the hypotenuse is the angle, the side that's opposite the 90 degrees. So again I see this time that sine of angle C is equal to opposite which is H over hypotenuse which here is B. So now I can multiply both sides with a B and I find that the hypotenuse, or not really the hypotenuse, I, I, H is now going to be confused with hypotenuse, not hypotenuse, okay, it's height actually, that the height of this triangle is equal to B sine C. Okay, now the, the two triangles have the same height, don't you agree with that? Okay, both of them have their highest leg um, go up from D to A, so H is the height for both triangles. That means that this height and that height must be equal, it's the same H's. Okay, it's not a different H, it's just um, described because it forms part of different triangles. So what we see now is that that means that this H here must be equal to that H there. This H here is called is, is uh, equal to sine C sine B and this H here is equal to B sine C. Okay, sine of angle C. And there we have a relationship. You see I don't have the H anymore. I only have a side length, two angles, actually two side lengths. I've got two side lengths, C and B, and I've got two angles. And what's the relationship between the side lengths and the angles? Well, the two, we've got one side length that's opposite another angle, and another side length that's opposite the other angle. Okay, so this is, might confuse you a little bit because now the C goes with the B, so all we're going to do is divide both sides with a CB. Divide both sides with a CB, and you see on this side it cancels, and on this side it cancels so that we have the sine rule. This is the sine rule, that the sine of angle B divided by the side length B, that's a ratio, that compares sine of B to the side length B, will be equal to sine of C over C, okay? And that is called the sine rule. And now you can see, oh, this is actually very nice, that the sine of an angle, if I can draw any triangle here, any triangle, yeah, and I'm even going to number it differently. This can be side length, uh, let's say, T, U, V. Then I can say, well, the sine of angle T divided by its opposite side length, okay, which is T, will be equal to any of the other ones. Okay, it doesn't matter, okay, sine of U divided by the side length u. So I use these two. Okay. And you only need to use two, but it could also be sine of angle t over t could be equal to sine of angle v over v. Or sine of u over u can be equal to sine of v over v. Okay, so it doesn't matter. You can compare any side length and any angle with um, 
with another pair of opposing angle sides okay I hope that makes sense I will just inform you that usually on a formula sheet it would look like this this is what you would see sine of angle a over a is equal to sine of angle B over B is equal to sine of angle C forgot my angle there sine of angle C over C but please remember that this is not an equation this is just a relationship and and it's true for uh, for all of this but when you use it you're only going to use two of them at a time so you're not going to write it down like this this just means you can use any two you can either use those two or those two okay or these two depending on what you were given now in the next couple of videos we will uh, definitely get you some examples of how we can use this and uh, let's just see when will we use this so remember I'm going to have sine of any angle so I'm just going to call it a and its opposite side is equal to sine of any other angle so let me call it O for other okay it's in a triangle okay it must be they both in the same triangle over its opposite side length okay the other opposite side length now what I want you to just notice here is that to use this if I am given information in a graph okay if I am given an angle a that angle is given okay and th then I must use it in connection with its opposite side length and I must also have another angle and its opposite side length now one of them can be unknown let's look at the different scenarios where they are on where they are unknown let's say one of the side lengths are unknown the one opposite a okay what do I need in order to use the sine rule to calculate that length well I'll need if I have a side length missing side length I want to calculate a side length what do I need to use this I need the opposite angle the opposite angle and I need another side length I need this uh, let's do it in green this is what I need in green let's make it uh, more prominent green I need in green the opposite side uh, the opposite angle another side length and its opposite angle I need another side length plus its opposite angle okay now let's say I didn't have that opposite angle I had this angle right here okay is that a problem well, not really, because if I have two angles in a triangle, the other angle will just be 180 minus those two angles. So I can easily find the opposite angle, but the angle that I have to use here must be the angle that's opposite the side length that I have. Does that make sense? I hope so. That's if I need a side length. What if I need an angle? What if I have an angle missing? Okay, so this time let's draw another graph or another triangle with an angle missing. So this is the angle that I'm trying to work out. Then I need, again, if I want to use the sine rule, I need three out of the four unknowns, okay, or th uh, parameters actually. So I've got an angle missing, so this one is missing, which means I need the opposite side. So I need the opposite side. and I need another angle and its opposite side okay do you see how the sine rule requires opposite pairs and it's actually e easy to remember because sine is opposite over hypotenuse okay so the, the sine 
ratio gives us a little bit of an insight into what we're going to need for the signed rule. We need opposite pairs. Okay, I think that's where I'm going to leave this so that we can get to some examples. I'll see you in the next video.